Last week, the investigative journalism outlet ProPublica published a bombshell story. They revealed that in some years, some of the nation's richest individuals, billionaires, paid no taxes. Some have done it more than once. The story is generating a lot of conversation about the tax code, about inequality, and also about sourcing and how you decide to publish something like this. I'm excited to have a conversation uh, about this story and their findings with um, one of the reporters behind it, Paul Keel. He is a correspondent for ProPublica covering business and consumer finance. This year, his focus has been on the IRS and namely its ability to administer U.S. tax laws. His work has garnered a long list of awards, but what's most important and impressive is he has also driven real change. His stories have led to a $135 million settlement by a subprime lender, congressional legislation, state law changes, and the forgiveness of $17 million in medical bills by a nonprofit hospital. Those are all past stories. This new one is sure to generate calls for change as well. Bringing him in now. So just for folks who haven't had the time to read the article, can you just give us sort of a sum summary of what you all uncovered and reported? Yeah, so we took a look at uh, the fact that, I think some people might know this, that it doesn't really matter how rich you are. It matters what income you put on your tax, re tax return each year. Um, and so what we did is we looked at the top 25 uh, wealthiest Ameri Americans, according to Forbes. Um, it's a group that I think as of 2018 was worth over a trillion dollars together. A trillion. A trillion dollars. Yeah, these, these numbers are kind of hard to, to, to grok. Um, and, and so what we did is it looked simply like how, how richer did they get in one year compared with how much in taxes did they pay that year? So uh, there are very clearly, I guess, uh, uh, crazy examples with, uh, you know, we, we have Elon Musk, who's now the second wealthiest Americans paying zero in federal income taxes in 2018. Uh, we had a couple of years in there uh, where Jeff Bezos paid zero in, in federal income taxes. And those are obviously, you know, stand out. But we also sort of stepped back and took this whole group and looked at how much richer they got over five years. And we found it was $400 billion. That was from 2014 and 2018. And compared how much in tax they paid over that time, and it was about a little less than fourteen billion dollars, and so we say that's about three percent of how richer they got they paid in taxes, um, and that's the result of the system that we have. That it doesn't matter how rich you are; it matters how much income you have that year. And then we go in the piece. We we try to really explain how this can be, um, how you can have a system that that doesn't catch, you know, the real source of of, of wealth for the richest Americans. I want to get into that, but before we break down this income and wage thing in the tax code, um, how does what they paid compared to what um, the medium household income tax bill is? Yeah, so we give a couple of examples in the piece. Um, I think the basic thing to know is like the easiest thing for the government to tax is wages, and kind of the most comprehensively taxed thing is wages. Like if you look Wait. at your job you'll see like not just federal income tax, but also payroll taxes, these taxes for social security and Medicare. Um, so the example we give in the piece is, you know, someone like a household earning around $70,000 a year will pay something like 14%. Uh, you know, if they look down at their pay stub, that's kind of the typical amount that's coming out. Um, and so obviously that's way more than the 3% number. Um, but, and that's, that's a, that, and, and we also look at like trying to build wealth and how that looks for an average family, you know. So we have a system for the wealthiest, they get vastly wealthier, wealthier, and then it's not really captured on the taxes, whereas average, you know, households really struggle to build wealth. And we looked at it over time. And, you know, a typical household might very well pay more in taxes than their wealth grows. Mm. And of course, this is all legal. So would you talk a little bit about the structure of the U.S. tax system and in what ways does it favor the uber wealthy? Right. So uh, we give a couple examples in the piece. Right? The simplest example is Warren Buffett, you know, who's I think the sixth richest American has the latest count. He's worth over $100 billion. And simply, you know, he's built this company over, uh, you know, decades, Berkshire Hathaway. It's a massive company. But the company doesn't pay dividends, or doesn't send payments to, to shareholders every year. So he doesn't have a big amount of income that's coming into his tax return every year. And he's also basically never sold. 
So he's writing the, the share price up. That's making him wealthier. Um, but when you look at his taxes, essentially what you're seeing is like kind of side investments for him, like sort of like an average person. It might be like, you know, their checking account savings, like they have a savings account and whatever else, you know, that's, that's Warren Buffett's version of that. If it's like $15 million a year. Um, but, you know, we point out in one year, you know, like, so 15,000 people had more income than Warren Buffett, who's like this legendary investor. Um, and that's simply because he's not realizing his income. It's not coming in a way that's going to be captured by the tax code. Um, so that's a very simple example. He's just avoiding income. And then it gets a little more complex. Uh, a basic fact that I think nobody really understands is that if you're vastly wealthy, you can very easily borrow against your wealth. So there's banks running up around the block to give you a very cheap loan. You know, it's kind of similar to if you have a, a house, um, you can get a, a, you know, an equity loan on, on your, on your, on your mortgage. Um, it's like that, except that they own, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars worth of stock. Um, and, and so that is a way to, to kind of take advantage of your wealth and not have that show up as income. And, and one clear example of that we think is Elon Musk who borrows, well, has access to a credit line that's in the billions. Um, and, you know, we see uh, years he paid zero in, in 2018, but other years he didn't pay much more than that. Essentially, the only time you see a lot of income with him was when he actually exercised stock, stock options related to Tesla. So let me help break this down also for the audience who might not be as familiar with all these terms and how it's structured. Basically, what you're saying is the tax code is very clear on how to tax wages. So if you're paid in a paycheck, that's super clear, but a lot of these billionaires aren't paid in a paycheck, right? Like they don't get yeah, a, a they salary. Don't have like so, Bezos pays them. Uh, Amazon pays Bezos eighty thousand dollars a year. Eight. And Eighty thousand dollars. Eight. And and you know, there's CEOs who who right. get a dollar wage uh, a year, and generally it's uh, it's been covered in the press a lot, like uh, big sacrifice on their part, you know, or like they really believe in the company, so they don't want a salary; they just right. want. And they're making yeah. all and their stock yeah right um but what you have to realize is that if they were to pay it a high salary it'd be, it'd be taxed at 37 percent um whereas if you sell stock it's taxed at 20 percent, or if you just avoid income altogether then okay. you, you know. break that piece down so we understand if you get a salary it's very clear how that gets taxed so a lot of these guys don't take a salary they take yep. their money another way what do you mean when you say don't realize income how does that work right so if uh you know, examples in the story. Of, uh, so Jeff Bezos got $100 billion richer between 2014 and 2018. Um, so that doesn't show up on his tax return unless he actually goes and sells some of that stock. And then it's taxed as a capital gain, the difference between how much you bought it at and what you sell it at. Um, and so if you just never sell, then there's never any income to tax. And that's how you get this massive gap between what they put on their tax return and, and how much, you know, Forbes says they're worth. Can we talk about some of the features in the tax code that they're able to take advantage of? Like so, share production and, uh, go ahead. Right, yeah, so, so like, yeah, on the, on the one side of this, you have Warren Buffett who's super, super simple, which is basically never realizing um, income. And then uh, one example we give in the piece is Carl Icahn, who's kind of like this legendary billionaire. He was like a corporate raider back in the 80s. Um, and you look at his tax returns and we saw like over two years, he. He had income over $500 million. So you would expect someone like that to, to pay tax, but he's able to borrow a lot of money. And then the interest he pays on these massive loans uh, is tax deductible. So he can count that against his income and end up with zero income to tax and therefore zero taxes. And the, the one example we give in the piece is he owns uh, actually two penthouse apartments in Midtown Manhattan um, that he's put up you know, to the bank as, as a way to you know, as, as collateral against this, he's going to get a billion dollar loan um, with Bank of America. And so you can borrow a lot, you can use that in your business, and then the you can make money and then the, the interest that you pay on that is, is counted against your income, you end up with zero income tax. It's amazing. One year you reported Jeff Bezos got a child tax credit. Right. So that's just like, that's just the tax code being like, okay, you have no income. Therefore, you get the stuff that no people who have no income have. So he had one year where he didn't, you know, you look, there's nothing really related to Amazon except for the $80,000 wages in that year of tax return. Um, he actually had a loss for that year because his side investments somehow resulted in a loss. And so the tax system is basically like, okay, you had zero income, therefore you get the stuff that goes to people with zero income. 
and that was a, like four thousand dollars worth of tax credits. He actually had negative income tax that year. It's amazing. They also can afford high priced accountants who can find all this stuff, right? Yeah, but this is, I mean, we'll be doing stories about much more complicated stuff. But um, the funny thing about this story is that a lot of tax experts have been like, duh, like in response to the story, uh, because it's a main feature of our tax code. We don't tax wealth, we tax income. But we think that, first of all, like normal people don't think about that. Um, and second of all, it's it's one thing to know that in the abstract and another to like actually see like the richest people in America being literally zero in some years. Mm -hmm. Do you think um, a, a part of this is lax enforcement? There were always hearing stories about how the IRS isn't funded well enough and it's too much work to go after the mega billionaires because they are gonna get lawyered up. But if you go after a regular person, it's a lot easier. Yeah, that's, uh, we've been doing a number of stories about that going back a couple of years that, I mean, the IRS has had its budget gut gutted over the last 10 years or so. Um, and what happens when you do that is you result in, like, to everyone who's like middle income is essentially audited by a computer, because it's not that hard to audit someone who has like a W-2. Right. Like, if you make a math error, you'll get like a you know, nasty letter from the IRS to fix it. Um, but you're talking about auditing people who are super wealthy. That requires like a skilled investigator. It's it's someone who nearly needs to know what they're doing. Yeah. They can't just no computer can just spit out a letter and like audit Jeff Bezos. Um, so when these these budget cuts have happened to the IRS, that's who benefits. It's corporations and and the wealthy. But in this case, a lot of what we're talking about what we're talking about is perfectly legal. It is legal. It is not right. Yeah. So I mean, if if uh, if they don't have income to realize. Uh, then there's nothing really the IRS can do. Uh, okay, so this might be a self-evident question, but I want to put a point on it. According to Forbes, between 2014 and 2018, the 25 richest Americans saw their worth rise a collective 401 billion, as you said, and by your guys' calculation, they paid a true tax rate of 3.4%, according to your data. So is the tax code exacerbating the race, uh, the wealth gap, excuse me, in America? Uh, I think there's a good reason to think that, yes, because the, 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 I mean, this aspect of borrowing, I think, like, really blows people's minds uh, when you think about the fact that you can get richer and there's a way to tap into your wealth that doesn't result in you having income and having to pay taxes on that. Um, and, you know, there is a big aspect of our tax code that's supposed to sort of catch this, and that's when people die. There's an estate tax. Right. Um, but as we point out in the story, there's, there's a whole industry to get around that. Um, and then simply if you're like Warren Buffett and say, I'm just going to give it all to charity, that, that means it's not going to be taxed. So there, there's, there's, you have choices. Yeah. yeah. Can you give us some perspective and it may or may not be in the data, but how has the pandemic exacerbated this? Well, I mean, the, the, the wealth of this, the, the, the top, like, you know, Jeff Bezos is, I think <laughs> he's actually been selling stock, but he's getting his, his worth is rising faster than he can like kind of realize the worth. So he's, uh, he not only did he have a divorce that, that kind of, you know, broke his, his, his wealth up a bit, but also he's been selling like billions of dollars worth of stock, but he's actually wealthier now than he was a couple of years. He's, he's getting closer to 200 billion. So, um, you know, the COVID was very good to, to Amazon in terms of uh, its stock price. Um, so yeah, a lot of these things have been, these, these are going back decades. We make the point in the piece of like, kind of how did we get here? And, things got a lot worse than last year. So what could be done to remedy what seems to an outsider to be the inherent unfairness of the tax code? So, uh, you know, Elizabeth Warren has been touting a wealth tax going back a couple of years. And that basic idea is, doesn't matter how much income you realize, it's, you know, 2% or 3% of your wealth. And that would have changed in these years. There's a lot of people who don't like that idea for various reasons. There's the or they think it might not pass judicial muster, like it might not get past the court. Right. There's like, is it constitutional? There's that fight among uh, tax nerds. And then there's also this issue of like, is it too complicated? It's just too right. hard. Which, uh, that is true. It would be difficult, but also like, it's not like the tax code is super simple right now. Um, so I was, there's a lot of tax breaks that get passed that end up being super complicated, but when the tax rates get passed, like the complication is not the problem, but when you talk about this, then it's a big problem. Um, so, uh, and there's a lot of um, proposals that the Biden administration has on the table right now. So 
in the context of like proposals in the last couple of decades, like what the Biden administration is proposing to do is like the biggest tax increases I think we would have seen ever on and, and recent memory uh, on the rich. But we make the point in the piece that um, that wouldn't really change the dynamic that we're pointing out in this piece. You have to have it, it has to be something else. If you raise the tax rate on Warren Buffett, you're just gonna, you know, he's been advocating for that himself, one thing, but it wouldn't make, make that much of a difference if you don't actually, you don't have the income to be taxed. Do you have to tax assets in some way to, to equalize things? Assets have to be taxed, not just wages. Yeah, the other slightly more complicated idea is that as people get richer, you kind of force them in some way to real to 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 count that as income in some way. So that's their proposals. It's it's going to get complicated. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's the basic idea is that we don't have to wait for you to sell. We're gonna we're gonna treat that as income in some way. And there's complicated you know objections to that. But it, if you wanted to, if people really wanted to do it, there there probably would be a way to do it. it does any of this have mainstream supports or the support of perceived centrists, or it's all? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I've been struck. There has been uh, like some conversation, some comments from from senators that we've seen. Like, I think people actually were surprised um, and seen this idea floated of like a kind of tripwire where, you know, if you seem like you're super rich and you didn't pay any tax, that it would force you to pay a little bit. There's right, but, like a ba a basic minimum tax requirement. Right. Yes, yeah. but. That there's actually some. There was like a big controversy back in the '60s when the the Treasury Secretary went and said like, "There's all these millionaires not paying taxes," and so they passed that, and pretty much all of them find their way around it in its current form. There is a minimum tax in our tax code; it just doesn't catch that many people. Um, so I guess they could try again. Wow. Okay, so let's talk for a minute, if you will indulge us, on the process of reporting a story like this. Like you guys get this these documents. What goes through your mind? Well, first it's, it's data. So it's, it's, it's a bunch of numbers. Um, and you know, what we've said is it took a really long time just to get our arms around it because it's, it's millions of rows of data. Um, and so there's that, um, and taxes are complicated in general. So that's an added complication to working with lots of data. Um, and the other thing is just making sure like, is this real data, right? Right. Um, so, right. You know, some steps we took was, you know, there there have been things that have been surfaced in the public. You know, there's there's very wealthy people who run for office. There's, you know, Warren Buffett has put some details of his taxes out. There's lawsuits and some things that we could look at to say, okay, that number matches. Um, and then, uh, you know, you 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 spend time with the data, and also, I mean, like your kind of nightmare as a journalist is that you're being led into something that um, it's been tailored for you in some way. Um, or like it seems real, but there's something that, so, but I mean, what, we spent a lot of time with it and we came to the conclusion that this is real. Um, it, it hasn't been like, uh, has been like, you know, put together in a way that, that makes it kind of biased in some way. Um, and then we weren't said like, we were given the data, but not with any preconditions or, you know, uh, it was just like kind of go to town essentially. Um, so, uh, and and we've we all the, the billionaires that we we you know mentioned in this piece, we went to them. We we showed the numbers that we're going to report. Um, none of them have said you know this isn't the real number. So, at this point, I think everyone should have confidence that it's real data. Um, it's amazing. So. Now, ProPublica said publicly the organization does not know who provided the IRS or the, the data, um, but that its value outweighs the mystery of its provenance. How do you make that calculation? I mean, you're basically thinking, is this like really important? Um, you know, journalists get leaks. Um, and so you can, you can soul search about, you know, what did this person want me to do? Uh, to me, like the kind of the way to to think about it is, first of all, is this real? And second of all, is this like in the public interest? Like I work for a place that literally means like for the public in, in Latin. Um, so that kind of makes, we're not going to report something just because it's sort of titillating and, and right. um, you know, we're kind of we're aware that we're, we're generally the vegetables of, of journalism. <laughs> in the best way. Yes. I mean, vegetables. <laughs> 
yummy it, vegetables, well cooked. With the right seasoning, it can also. Yes. That's kind of the idea. And um, it's the universe of vegans now, so. <laughs> um, taking it too far, sorry. Uh, I think the DOJ is looking into this, and the Wall Street Journal alleges the data could have come from a um, foreign government to undermine confidence in the U.S. government. What's your take on that? I, again, like we, we, we think like, is this real? Is this important? Um, and that's kind of where we go with that. I, I would say like an interesting aspect of this is like, like I said, the, the text information is private, which, uh, you know, is a different debate whether it should be as private as it is, but that means that no one ever sees this stuff. So you can have a system like, this is just a basic fact of our system, the fact that it taxes income and not wealth, but no one had any real idea of what that meant in individual examples. Right. So, I mean. You made it real. Right, we're doing a lot of fancy stuff and there'll be like more complicated stories that will That's, be. Yeah, so there's more to come. More well-seasoned vegetables to come. But uh, like this one was just basically like, let's just look at what they paid in tax and how much richer they got, which is not rocket science. But even that just basic, you know, insight is, I mean, is this story has really uh, reverberated. And I think the reason is we have the system that everything is so secret, you don't have no idea what's really happening. No, I was shocked. You guys had all this data and we never saw Trump's taxes for all those years. It's like amazing. <laughs> well, there's, um, there's, there's more to come, but. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, we will stay tuned. Um, well, I'm grateful for your time today and for your patience explaining all this because I think it's really helpful to break it down because one of the things I always find in stories like this is there's sometimes, if you're not familiar with this kind of conversation, it feels impossible to penetrate, but it's really basic information anybody can understand. And I'm grateful for you taking the time to help us get there so we get it. We really killed ourselves in trying to write this in a clear way. That's yeah, it's wages versus wealth in a way. Like wages right. are taxed, wealth seems not to be. Do we right. want that to be our future? Yeah. Right, exactly. Um, Paul, thank you for your time today and for your work. And I'd love to have you back when you bring us more vegetables. All right, great. Thank you. <laughs> Take good care. Bye-bye.